Hi, in this video, we're going through the Mobile Operations Center or the MOC in GTA 5 Online. Hi and welcome back. My name's Dan and I'm an old grumpy gamer. Grand Theft Auto is a truly massive game. Between GTA 5 and the constant updates from Rockstar for GTA Online, there's no shortage of new content and interesting things to do. Join me then as we look at the Mobile Operations Center or the MOC in GTA 5 Online. Before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, we do how-to guides, news and giveaways. So consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay up to date. The MOC is a command trailer based on the US flag mobile unit. It's towed by a Phantom Custom or a hauler custom and is pretty damn chunky piece of equipment. So why on earth would you want to purchase an MOC? Well, there's a few key reasons. Access to exclusive missions at the trailer's operations center gives you access to a series of exclusive missions that will pay reasonably well. The weapons workshop, so no need to head back to the bunker or the agency to restock your Mark II ammo, you can bring the workshop to you. It's a great hidey hole. Uh, this thing can tank up to 20 missiles or RPG rounds. If you need to seek refuge while they're on the run, there are few places better. And trade prices. There are some cracking discounts available on ruggedized vehicles once you've knocked over a few missions. You can have a personal insurgent, so this allows you to set the weaponized, armored, insurgent pickup custom as your personal vehicle. So let's talk budget. Now the MOC is, well, mobile, so we don't need to worry about a location, but we do need to worry about what's hauling the trailer. So we have two base options here. The Phantom Custom, which is a traditional US Australian style trailer tractor. If you pick this option up, the trailer and truck will set you back $1,225,000 in total. The other truck you can grab from the get-go is a hauler custom. This is a Euro-style cab over and is a touch slower than the Phantom, but it's a bit quicker off the mark. So this is my pick at $1,400,000 all in. Next, we have some options for the trailer. Now, the trailer is laid out in bays and we have three slots available to fill. Starting with the first bay, you can either grab the standard living quarters for an an additional 145,000 or the command center for 320 grand which also includes a turret for the trailer. For the second bay you can leave it empty at no additional cost. You can slap a living quarters in there for 145 if you didn't add it to the first bay or you can add a standalone weapons workshop for 245,000. You also have the option to add a weapons and vehicle workshop which also takes up bay 3 for 995,000. Finally the third bay if you've not already filled it this one's limited to a personal quarters if you don't already have one at 145,000 or personal vehicle storage at 195,000. Next up is the color scheme. We have three core schemes available, white, gray, or black, each with their own subset of colors. Now you can go with straight white at no additional cost or you can grab any of the other color schemes at a flat rate of 115,000. Finally, we have the loadout. Now you don't have to add any if you don't want, although the command center comes with a front turret. Regardless, you can upgrade the front and rear turret sets at a cost of 210,000 if you've unlocked the option through bunker research. So you can get away with a straight 1,370,000 for the MOC itself in a pinch. That's the Phantom Custom and the minimum required fit out for the trailer of the sleeping quarters. But your optimum layout for this is the hauler custom, a command center, the weapon and vehicle workshop, an upgraded color scheme and the armaments if they've been researched. Which brings us to around 2,820,000 for the machine itself. And with the mission earnings available that works out to a little over 35 hours of active grinding to make your money back however and it is a big however this thing comes with one of the biggest paywalls in the game see you can't just buy an MOC you need to unlock the MOC and to do that you need to own an operational bunker and to do that you need to be a VIP motorcycle club president or a CEO so that means you'll need to spend at minimum $200,000 on the Grand Chaparral Clubhouse and $1,165,000 on the Polito Forest Bunker plus upgrades. So with that in mind, you're looking at a minimum additional spend of 1,365,000 before you can unlock the MOC. But even then, as we've discussed in our bunker guide, 2 million is a better price guide for this one. So if you don't already own a motorcycle club or a CEO's office and a bunker, your actual out of pocket is more like $5 million or about 63 hours for a damn trailer. Not bad, Rockstar, not bad. Now, the more astute may have noticed when we were going through the 
upgrade options, the front and rear turret option. This typically isn't available out of the box. Instead, you will have to unlock that upgrade with bunker research. For the full breakdown in what's involved, check out our bunker guide. There's a link in the description below. But the upshot is you'll need to grind bunker research unlocks until you get a shot at the turret upgrade. This seems to be randomy, so it might take a while and cost quite a bit of money. Speaking of unlocks, we do need to do a bit of work to unlock the actual missions for the MOC. These pay okay and you'll get trade prices on a few different vehicles, but the main thing is they're a lot of fun, so it can be worth the grind if you're keen. To unlock the MOC missions, you need to do bunker supply runs, which is to say you'll need to pop to the PC in your bunker, then go to supplies and steal supplies. Purchasing them doesn't count, you have to steal them. You'll notice here in the start mission screen in the control center, next to these padlocks, there's a number. That's the number of steel supply missions you need to run to unlock the individual mission type. So you can see here, the first one only takes two, the next four, then six, and so on until 16. Basically, you unlock a mission every two supply runs. Each supply run will take you between eight and 15 minutes, depending on your skill set. And once your supplies are maxed, you'll need to wait for them to diminish. So with 16 runs, you're likely looking around four hours of grinding to unlock the lot. And sadly, there's no way around that. So best settle in for a long afternoon. Right, so with the unlocks and expenses out of the way, what can you actually do with your MOC? Well, there's a couple of things. So you can call in at the MOC using your interaction menu. That's M on your keyboard, double squares on your Xbox, or swipe on your PlayStation. And once you're there, head down to services, then MOC, then request MOC. You can also call a personal vehicle in from here if you have one stored in the MOC itself too. If you drive your insurgent into the back of the MOC, it's switched from a Pegasus vehicle over to a personal vehicle, meaning you can now transport it in the back of the MOC or an Avenger, and you can use the mechanic to drop it off instead of paying for a Pegasus call. You can drive some vehicles into the back of the MOC by parking up the back, then using the button prompt top left to pull the vehicle in. If you've unlocked the weapons research or the vehicle research in the bunker, you'll also be prompted to upgrade. While your vehicle is in the back, you can activate the vehicle workshop and customize your vehicle as well. And if you've unlocked specific upgrades via the bunker research, you can install them here too. If you've been grinding bunker research, you'll also have unlocked upgrades for some of your weapons. The weapons workshop allows you to upgrade eligible pieces to Mark II, increasing firepower and opening up options for different ammo types. And to be honest, this is why I actually got the thing in the first place. Being able to re-up your Mark II ammo more or less anywhere on the map has proven invaluable. Plus, who doesn't like a Mark II sniper with thermal vision and explosive rounds? It's great fun. Also, one of the most fun things for free roam is anti-griefing measures. It's better if you have two friends, but you can jump in the back and use the mounted cannons to take out clowns if you've got a bit of patience and a good aim. These have explosive rounds or E-rounds similar to the Avenger too, so that's always a good time. And finally, the last thing the MOC can do is launch a specific set of missions that allow you to make money. Now, the typical payout is the standard 22 grand for more than 15 minutes of playtime, so assuming you're able to cycle through it for an hour, you can earn upwards of 80 grand per hour pretty easily. So, is it worth it? Nah, to me it seems like a whole lot of palaver for not a lot of gain. I get it back in the day with the weapons workshop and the tankiness, but it's a lot of money and you can do most of the stuff in other places now. Yeah, I mean if you've already owned a bunker, grab it. If not, I wouldn't worry about it until much later in your GTA career. So, thanks for watching. Check out the video up the top for another guide or the one down the bottom for some more old grumpy gamer goodness. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.